I honest to god cannot tell if Mihoyo just made a gigantic mistake or if they did this on purpose and are just baiting. But I'm pretty sure Nervalette just revealed how Farina saves Fontaine. I mean, spoiler warning I guess, but this is literally a voice line in the game right now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Nervalette's final ascension line states this. Now that I have reclaimed one of the seven authorities from the hands of the usurpers, I have regained my true form. I am now a fully fledged dragon, powerful enough to judge the rest of the gods. My final destiny is to judge the usurper king in the heavens above. But until that time comes, I will lend my power to you. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I, I literally cannot fathom why this voice line is in the game. It feels too easy. It seems like Mihoyo is baiting with this. I mean, this is this is quite literally insanity. For those unaware of the potential world-defining implications of just how grand this voice line is, let me explain. From this voice line alone, we gained insight into age-old questions and Genshin impacts like why the skies of Tevat are fake, remember that? What's happening with Farina? Who won the war between the Primordial One and the Second Who Came? What the Heavenly Principles are up to right now? And how strong a Sovereign really is? And most importantly, it sort of just spoils all of 4.2 as far as we can as far as we can tell. But it also sets the stage for a wild arc conquest in 4.2 because some of the things he implies with these voice Lines should be impossible with the Tevat we know right now. I mean, it's uh, you can see this is a nut, bro. I, I, I can't even speak. Like, why is this in the game? <laughs> And I mean, let's not beat around the bush, the most obvious lore bomb here, for Nervalet to have reclaimed one of the seven authorities from the hands of the usurpers, that means at some point he gets the Hydronosis. This cannot be misconstrued in any other manner of speaking thanks to Nervalet himself telling us this in the same conversation he admits to being the Hydro Sovereign. None of the currently living dragon sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. So again, for him to have reclaimed one of the seven authorities means at some point he will obtain the Hydronosis and use it to reclaim his full dragonhood. So he gets the Gnosis and he uses it. This, in its own right, spawns a completely separate line of questions, like how does he get the Gnosis? How does he use the Gnosis? Does this mean Arlecchino doesn't get the Gnosis? How will the Saritza react? How does Celestia react to a Sovereign gaining their full Dragonhood back? But putting those questions aside for now, Nerva Let's obtaining the Gnosis is concerning for a whole other set of reasons. Do you remember what he said it would take for him to obtain the Gnosis? In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. So it's a two-parter. He needs the status quo to change and the Archon to disappear. I mean, unless the Archon disappears, what exactly does he mean by disappearing? <laughs> it sounds like a 1920s mob boss, and I mean, this has absolutely horrific implications for Fossilor's well-being in the future. Now, I'm not saying he kills her for the Gnosis, but bro. And a quick note, the current line of thinking is that Fossilor's may have split herself into two beings. The Farina we see today, who seems to lack a certain aspect of divinity, but tries to make up for it by constantly putting on a performance acting, you could say. But when push comes to shove, she folds. And finally, there's the god Fossilors, who's in the Oratrice with the Gnosis, you know, making all that Indemenium. So when I say there's a slim possibility that he'll just disappear Fossilors, that's what I'm talking about. Probably something to do with the Oratrice, as opposed to Farina herself. But it's still a scary thought, because so far as we know, the Fossilors Oratrice machine, at the very least, has a consciousness and a voice, so it is sentient. Would he, would he really just kill her? Uh, but then again, maybe because Farina and Fossilors are split, they join back together somehow, some way, and just give him the Gnosis because they don't need it anymore? I, I really have no idea. But circling back to Nervalet's earlier statement, he says, given the status quo, implying this is the reason he can't obtain a Gnosis. What is the status quo? Originally, I assumed that this meant Celestia was strictly observing the situation on Tevat and keeping an eye on the Gnosis due to the ancient power we now know that they wield. Hell, I thought this might have been the basis for Nahida making this claim. What if I were to destroy the Gnosis now and awaken the Heavenly Principles? Awaken... the Heavenly Principles? Hmm... Do you think that's really possible? 
The heavenly principles have been silent for many years, but the Gnosis are symbols of their control over Tevat and all the laws. Will the destruction of a Gnosis attract the attention of the heavenly principles? And if so, how do the Fatui plan to deal with the consequences? Do you dare to gamble such a possibility with me? But now that I look back on it, me thinking this is just wrong. Had the Heavenly Principles really been watching after them closely, they probably would have stepped in the moment Venti's Gnosis was taken from him. Surely they would have put a stop to the Cerita's plans already if that were the case, but so far as we know, they haven't done anything, and they haven't done anything in over 500 years. So what is the status quo? I want to say it has something to do with the Archons needed to keep their Gnosis, but Zhang Li willingly gave his up in a contract, and they gave hers to Miku hundreds of years ago because she didn't want it anymore. So what is the status quo? 4.2, you got a lot of explaining to do, brother. Anyway, moving on to the rest of Nervalet's voice line, he later states he's a real dragon now. I have regained my true form. I am now a fully-fledged dragon, powerful enough to judge the rest of the gods. Powerful enough to judge the rest of the gods. He could have said anything, but he chose this particular phrase. Something that is not unique to us at all. We've heard it two other times, in fact. But... When there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> the god of justice lives for the spectacle of the courtroom, seeking to judge all other gods. Something particularly interesting to note, however, is the description of the Varunda Lazarite gemstone. In it is a quote from Fosalores which states, My ideals have no stains, I must correct you. People here bear no sins in the eyes of the gods, only laws in the tribunal can judge someone. They can judge even me, so praise my magnificence and purity. A better translation of the Chinese version, however, states people here bear no sins against the gods, meaning the people have done nothing to offend Celestia. However, that's not what I wanted to touch on. The final sentence, they can judge even me, so praise my magnificence and purity, makes a lot of sense now. Before it was thought that Farina was going to be the one to judge the other gods, she said so herself. But now we know for a fact that Nervalet is going to be the one judging the other gods, I mean he literally says so, and eventually the primordial one, somehow. <laughs> I think back to when we first stepped foot in Fontaine. All the people were doing were praising Farina. They love her everywhere she goes. She's the star of the show, and we know she deeply cares about what others think of her. My dear people, rich and poor, those with cup in hand and those with nothing at all, raise your glasses in celebration. If you don't have one, then just raise your hand in lieu. As you can all see, two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation. Come, let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and her companion, who have journeyed here from distant lands. I, Fosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro, and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Originally, I thought it may have been simply she wants to seem perfect in the eyes of the people, but now it seems like she's trying to paint the best picture of herself before Judgment Day arrives. Now finally, Nervalet says he's working his way up to judge the Usurper King in the High Heavens. My final destiny is to judge the Usurper King in the Heavens above. This statement tells us a lot. One, it tells us for a fact that the Primordial One and the Heavenly Principles are one and the same. Two, it confirms the people of Onkonomiya's suspicions that the Primordial One defeated the Second who came in the Second War. And three, it tells us the reason the skies of Tevat are fake is due to the Primordial One using the eggshell from which he came to shield Tevat off from the rest of the world. Also, there is, <laughs> there's no way in hell he's taken on the Primordial One. Eight full-strength sovereigns weren't enough to take him down. All they did was manage to get him to create the four shining shades of himself, which, I mean, just made the whole system stronger, huh? At the very least, one of which is still kicking. Not sure what Nervalet thinks he can do on his own, but hey, dreamers can dream. Anyway, like I said, man, for the life of me, I have no idea why this voice line is in the game, but dude, 4.2, I, bro, they might have they did this just, just to hype 4.2. Oh god, they might have done that, bro. That, that might have been what they were thinking.